ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿಗ್ನಿಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಡೇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಶ್ಡ್ ಶೆಲ್ ವಿ ಸೇ ಗಾರ್ಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಆಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮೆನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಸೇ ಎಟ್ ದ ಔಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಹೌ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಇನಾಗ್ಯುರೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲೇ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನಾಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲೇ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಡಯಾಬಿಟೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂಲಿ ಇನಾಗ್ಯುರೇಟೆಡ್ at the same time i'm very happy to have had the opportunity to release the sugar knocker made from variety of herbs as prescribed in the ancient texts of ayurveda for controlling the symptoms and the certain signs of diabetes mellitus of course you talk about sugar reminds me of a nice book if any one of you want to read if you have the habit of reading books there's a beautiful book called who has seen blood sugar do you understand that's the title of the book what's the title of the book who has seen blood sugar do you know who has written that professor of diabetology in the college of physicians and surgeons in philadelphia and editor of the most prestigious annals of internal medicine for as long as 30 years and a great thinker in america an exception to the usual thinkers his name is frank davidoff f r a n k davidoff d a v i d o f f this is published by the college of physicians and surgeons in philadelphia and a very interesting book he asks a question for 40 years i have been treating diabetes patients i am called a diabetic specialist i have seen human beings i have seen patients i have seen blood i have seen sugar separately but i am yet to see blood sugar but all my life i have been struggling to keep that very interesting thing called blood sugar under control in my patients with all the effort on my part god only knows how many of them i have sent prematurely to meet their maker <laughs> this is a very very pertinent statement coming from a man who has had 40 years of experience of teaching i mean treating patients and teaching medical students as a professor in a very prestigious medical school in the united states of america now today i see lot of youngsters here some of them are so enthusiastic they are so loudly speaking to themselves in the audience etc etc i can see that you're all now ready you know how do i now knock this blood sugar off with this uh, sugar knocker you would be surprised the blood sugar part of the diabetes syndrome is probably the least important part of the diabetic syndrome then we teach about various endocrine glands and all kinds of biochemistry is there you know this goes up that comes down etc etc we think human body is a machine like a ma- motor car and let us say pancreas is like the carburetor of the motor car and something is wrong with that and we are now trying to replace the pancreas probably with a new pancreas or transplant the pancreas with a new pancreas and we think the problem is solved far from it pancreas is only an incidental part of the whole process some people say okay i will you know endocrinologist must have told you it's not the bank okay pancreas growth hormone liver spleen head brain everything they do even then diabetes is not controlled did you know that very interesting you get me a beautifully controlled diabetic beautifully controlled means blood sugar normal i will show you how badly his whole human system is upset we have gone deep into that human body is not a machine 
it cannot be equated to a machine and it does not run on bioelectricity. Did you understand that? Human body is run by the human consciousness. This, this is a very important thing. And what is human consciousness? Where is it situated? Somebody said, where is the mind? And the usual answer in the conventional positive science is never mind. And somebody says, what is matter? No matter. But if you go into quantum physics, you realize that there is so much happening down there, below there, where? Beyond the atom. And so the human mind or the human consciousness is present in every single human cell. And do you know how many cells are there in the human body? Any, any takers? 10 to the power 14 human cells. That is 100,000 billion cells are there. And millions and billions of them die every day and they are replaced by new cells. But the man is not the same one who he was or a woman is not the same one who she was three months ago. She is a new woman. Including the bone is new. Remember that? Every cell changes. But what does not change is the consciousness. And if you can appeal to the consciousness somehow or other, probably you will be able to appeal to the whole human body. That's very interesting. Now, having said that, my dear friends, let me come to this disease called diabetes. Only yesterday, because somebody asked me to write something on diabetes because I said diabetes is the is this a week or something? Because there is a week for everything. Number 90. Huh? Number 90. Number 90, yes, yes. Because the, in the West, things happen only by this way. There is a father's day, there is a mother's day, there is the uncle's day, wife's day, husband's day, because only on that day they think of their father and mother. Whereas in India we think of them every day, so we don't have to have a special day. Anyway, now we are thinking of diabetes every So I thought, what shall I write? So I wrote an article called Autobiography of Diabetes. So diabetes is talking to you all. And read that, it will come, come in print in English and also translate it to Kannada, it will come in various uh, journals. Now what I have said is, I am not bothering human beings, but human beings don't take their life very seriously. That's why they get into trouble. This is a very important thing. Diabetes is not a disease, but it is an abnormality of the whole human system. There is something going wrong. For which, partly we are responsible and partly probably our prarabdha is responsible. Very interesting. If you say, why does a man get a disease? Have you ever asked this question? Have you ever asked this question to yourself? If you say, how does a man get a disease? I can give you a discourse on every disease. How does a man get a heart attack? I know how does a man get a heart attack. And I think it's very simple. There is a pipe. It's like a toilet pipe, which is blocked. And I replace it. I'm fine. No, that's not heart attack at all. Those blocks are not very important. Except commercially, they're very important. But they're not very important. But this is a very important question is, why does a man get a disease? There was a thinking physiologist in 1844. He was 42 years old and he became the professor of physiology in the Liverpool University. His name was Charles Sherrington. If any one of you have seen the physiology book, Sherrington's Law, Sherrington's Drum, Sherrington's this, Sherrington's that or that. Charles Sherrington was very young when he became the professor of physiology, but a very brilliant chap and he was accepting his post as the professor and head of the department of physiology and he gave this speech, I quote, the positive sciences will never be able to answer the question why. They will at best answer the question how or how much. Ratio re, therefore, is not reason why. I can answer how does a muscle contract as a physiologist, but I'll never be able to say why does the muscle contract. I can tell you how does the heart contract, but I can't tell you why does the heart contract. <coughs> For why, you must go to teleology, philosophy, religion, and what have you. And there is a teleologic view. I see a nice thing there written. Nature protects every living being. I think this is a very, very pregnant statement. You imagine now, don't you read in the paper every day that diabetes is going to eat Indians up. Everybody will be a diabetic in the next 10 years. Haven't you seen that? Every day in the papers it comes. Do, how true is it, do you think? Probably 2% true. 90-8% false. Because these are all artificial statistics engineered and produced by vested interests who want to sell their drugs. 
and this is done through so called medical scientists whose research quote unquote is heavily funded by these drug companies do you want to know what the drug companies do not the indian drug companies they don't have that kind of money the american drug companies do you know what they want to do they by run the government of america do you know that president bush has much bigger lobby of the drug company helping him three times the size of the lobby of the oil companies can you believe that you know why he went to iraq to get oil okay that's one lobby oil lobby but the drug lobby is three times more powerful don't believe me you know i'm i'm not read this book if you want this book is called the truth about drug companies this is a fascinating book each one of you must read the truth about drug companies how they deceive us colon what to do about it full stop this is the whole title of the book it's not written by an ordinary ass like b m agdi it's written by the former editor of the new england journal of medicine who was the editor for 20 years before that her husband was the editor for 20 years so between the wife and the husband they were the editors of the new england journal of medicine which is supposed to be the mecca of medicine in united states of america for 40 long years her name is marcia m a r c i a angel a n g e l l and this book is published by random house new york and she has sold 1 million copies in one month and has become a multi millionaire herself she resigned the editorship of the new england journal of medicine because the journal owners changed the policy her husband had made a policy 40 years ago that anybody who receives money from the drug company shall not write an expert editorial in the new england journal of medicine now the management said one year ago there is hardly anyone who has not taken money from the drug company if you want to know how doctors are being paid by the drug companies read this editorial in the jama looking the gift horse in the mouth jama is the most prestigious american journal looking the gift horse in the mouth how from the third year medical student till he is buried or cremated the drug companies run doctors lives anyway if you don't believe any one of these things there's a very interesting book written by a doctor who designed his job and researched to write it it's called overdosed america o v e r d o dollar e d america instead of yes it's a dollar there overdosed america do you want to know what the drugs do the fourth important cause of death in the united states of america is adr adverse drug reactions do you know what the first cause of death you want to know no no you shouldn't know doctors interventions second is cancer third is heart attack anyway that's besides the point now coming back to human consciousness nature protects every living being the present high tech western modern medicine has been in vogue for about 100 years now of course it was in the various forms it was there for 5000 years from 100 bc in greece from hippocrates hippocrates got it from charaka 300 bc to 400 bc because alexander the great's army took the books to greece and uh, actually the, the original hippocrates thesis is almost a verbatim translation of charaka samhita but anyway it went through arabia it went through europe and went through so many things and then ultimately came to the so called west now in a refined form called quote and quote science now this is very interesting now before that mankind has been here for 900000 years 9 lakhs of years brahma's creation of this universe now of course there proof for that how on earth did we all live and become human beings now if you think it's you know diabetes going to eat you up in the next 10 years without doctors and medicines you're all going to die of diabetes for 9 9 lakhs of years how did you survive without this menaces it's because of that nature protects every living being we were all very intuitive when we were born but our intellect has completely nullified that your cat has a tummy ache which doctor does it see ayurvedic doctor unani doctor modern doctor no it goes out to the garden and eats some herb it knows cat knows which herb to eat have you seen dog eating grass you have yes when the dog has a problem it knows which grass to eat we also knew but we have forgot because we are daily brainwashed by the newspaper saying that diabetes will kill you and if you don't believe in x y z 
drug companies, drugs, you will die. And what is the treatment? Everybody must be screened, I believe, in India. Now we'll come back to diabetes. And we'll come back to sugar. Now what happens to nature protecting living beings is, you are made by nature, and then he has put in the corrective mechanism also inside you, and sent you here. If you behave normally, sensibly, you will live as long as you live comfortably. If you misbehave, you will die early maybe, and you will suffer. That's all the simple thing. Nature has a cure for everything. Did you know that? Most of our drugs are discovered like that. So, these herbs are nature given, God given, they are good. But, there are so, so many buts in it. Just lowering the sugar is not treatment of diabetes at all. No. It is a good treatment for the doctor, the laboratory and the report. But may not be a good treatment for the patient for the simple reason. That if it only lowers the sugar, it may not do what else it has to do. The most important thing is, it has to get the patient back into healthy chaos. We have done some beautiful studies and this can be very easily done. You make a diabetic stand on a high glass table. Okay? We take the photograph of his feet. Man is standing on the table. We take the photograph, digital photographs. And we digitize it. And we put a CW plot on that. And we can show beautifully how the capillary is gone doing that. This is a normal chaos. The blood supply to the feet comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes, and distributes like, like a flower going, you know, like that. Now you make a diabetic patient stand on that. Tightly controlled, blood sugar absolutely normal. He stands there, his capillaries are absolutely like that. They will never do that. Now if you can have something which shows that sugar is controlled and the capillary is doing that, that will be the real Dhanvantari's medicine. And I was telling our young man, energetic engineer, that the controlled studies in future should be done not on reductionist ideas as we do in most Western medicine. That is, you take two groups. Match control, we say. What is matching? Height, weight, body mass index, sex. That won't do. Because man is not his body. Man is 30% body, 30% genes, 40% consciousness. So you must be able to classify human beings in a genetico-constitutional conscious variety. That is only can be done by Ayurveda. That is, you know, this Vata Pitta Kapha is not just the literal meaning of that. These are genetico-constitutional subtypes of man. Now, somebody has developed a further thing. There are 500 subtypes of Vata Pitta Kapha. And all that can be computerized today. And you can get the CD from Pune University. There's a man called Bhushan Patwardhan. You write to him, he will send you the CD. You can put it there. And then any patient who comes to you, if you have a long questionnaire to know all about him, his worries, his anxiety, his background, etc., 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 and type it onto their computer, press a button, you get a subtype of that man. Now you must get, say, 100 people. And they are typed into various types. And you must compare the same type individuals with the other type. This is the real control study for the future. And one more thing as I have told you, you can now check the healthy chaos in everything. If you want, I can give you the chaos in the heart. If you want, I can give you chaos in the lung. If you want, diabetes is the most important part of the capillary system. You can see all diabetics are a problem, whether it is in the eye or the kidney or the lung or the leg or the heart or the wherever it is. It is the capillaries that really are a problem. Even tightly controlled diabetics have more complications than not so tightly controlled diabetics also. For the simple reason that you are not controlling the healthy chaos. So the future studies must be based on Ayurvedic classifications and healthy chaos of individuals. It is difficult, little difficult to, and little more expensive than the present one. But if really the powers that be understand this and make it a mandatory thing, we can have wonderful studies emanating from India which the West will have to copy. Now the West is trying. Actually they have put up a big thing called WPH. Whole Person Healing Group. And Whole Person Healing Group has got its head office in Washington, D.C. And last month they had a huge conference where I had to give a keynote address on what is healthy chaos. And this was attended by such eminent people. There are about 10 Nobel laureates and all kinds of people. There are not only doctors. There are engineers like our friend Girish. There are all kinds of people. Physicists, chemists, name it. They are there. 
and this is the future of medical research. Now, if any one of you have learned chemistry, I will tell you there is what's called a new chemical action happening in the human body called hormesis. Have you heard of this? It's not even written in the pharmacology books. Hormesis, H-O-R-M-E-S-I-S. Hormesis is, is every drug in very small doses has a biopositive effect. It does good to the human body. And there is a threshold beyond which it harms the human body. This applies to every single drug, A to Z. Every drug has the same thing, which is called hormesis, which was first discovered in vitamin C by an eminent chemist in the same department where Linus Pauling discovered vitamin C. But Linus Pauling didn't like it because you say vitamin C is bad, he hated it. So he filed a suit against this man for $10 million. And who won the suit? Edward Calabris won the suit. But of course, Linus Pauling didn't pay the money, the university paid the money. Anyway, Linus Pauling died. Now, hormesis has come to be. I'll give you an example. If anyone ever get a heart attack and come to the hospital, do you know what we give you? Rat poison. Warfarin is rat poison. Only thing is we give a larger dose to rat and a very small dose to you, that's all. Or sometimes we get from snake poison and give you thrombolytics. Or we get from urine and give you thrombolytics. And now urine is bad, but that extract is not bad in very small doses. Rat poison is bad for the rat and you also if you take it in larger doses, but in very small doses it may save you because it doesn't allow blood to clot inside the vessel. Now this is interesting, this is hormesis and that happens in Ayurveda. Ayurveda and homeopathic drugs work by hormesis. So that little bit of say for example ginger. Now ginger has the most potent antiviral drug ever found in medicine. And this was discovered by people in Harvard University. You and I think ginger, nobody will believe it. Garlic. They wanted to kill garlic by doing 43 studies in the world literature on garlic pearls. And everyone was negative. So they wrote an editorial in the BMJ, garlic is good for cooking but not as a medicine. So I wrote an editorial, garlic is good but not garlic pearls. You have not done your studies on garlic because garlic pearl doesn't have the SH group. They have removed it, removed the smell. And what is there? If you remove something, it's gone. So don't make Ayurvedic drugs. They are not Ayurvedic drugs, herbal drugs, into another reductionist science. Here, these boys have done not a reductionist science, but the whole thing. The whole is here. It's the whole that matters, not the bit. I told you, this is water. This is not hydrogen or oxygen. This is water as such. Now for studies, West won't accept unless you take an extract. You take an extract and study on the rat or rabbit or cat or dog or whatever it is if the animal protection group and Maneka Gandhi allow you and then show that it's safe. But for human beings, don't give the extract, give the whole. That's the idea. Now, I was telling you about controlling only sugar. Controlling sugar is necessary, but along with the complete change in the system of a diabetic, which can only come with a comprehensive lifestyle change. Most of us are born in poverty. Remember that. When we were in the, our mother's womb, our mothers didn't have good nutrition. So what happens is, if you still survive in the mother's womb, in the olden days, a lot of children used to die in the mother's womb. If you still survive and get born, you are born with a very small pancreas. You are born with a very small blood vessel. You are born with everything small. So if such a person, goes up to the age of about 30 and then goes to Dubai and starts eating meat four times a day and biryani ten times a day and payasam four times a day. This little pancreas says, my God, I can't, I can't you know, help you. So that fellow becomes a diabetic at the age of 25. Now we say diabetes is coming to eat us up. No, no, it's not coming. We are inviting it. Why? We have put our thrifty genes. Our genes are called thrifty genes. That is with very little food you can survive. But today what we eat is enough for 100 people. We eat so much. But if, if you don't want diabetes to kill Indians, you have to tell Indians to eat very less. <laughs> Lal Bahadur Shastri was the right person. He said, eat one meal less because there are so many people not eating. I would say, eat two meals less. But 
the remaining one meal, eat it four times or six times. In America, if you become a diabetic, you are given South Indian rice diet. And in India, if you become a diabetic, you are given chapati. So the wife will curse, ee saavin chapati maada vay kuntha. Avali chapati maada abhya sayla. That's not needed. What is needed is, we must eat depending on our genes. We should not eat too much. Second, we have become so sedentary now. When I was a young doctor, I have never seen a woman with the periarthritis or joint, with this, with that. No, because they had to grind the rice and grind with the other thing for making masala and then wash their clothes and draw water from the well. Beautiful exercise. None of them are diabetics. Today, you sit there, press one bell, chur, dosa is ready. And press another bell, water comes. And press another bell, it's washed. And it's also automatically ironed probably. So what do you do? Sit in front of the television or in the office. And in the office, what do you do? The boss is a tiger. Assistant is a tiger. Colleague is a tiger. We were in the forest. The cause of death was only predation and old age. Now predation is when you see a tiger, you would run. For that, God made you have a special mechanism called the autonomic nervous system, which immediately released catecholamines, which comes to the liver, where there are gunny bags of sugar kept as glycogen, and it released. So when you see a tiger, your blood sugar goes up because you got to run. Today you see a tiger in the office. And you are not running because you can't run. So each time you see the boss, your blood sugar goes up. So every day it keeps going up, going up, going up. It remains there up. This is called psychological stress and sedentary living. That's what Ayurveda said, taponalan. You thought doing tapas, no. Taponalan means not do nothing. And what happened? You eat so much and do nothing and blame the pancreas for diabetes. And then try to control the sugar because sugar is a very small part of it. I told you, David wrote, I have seen diabetics, I have seen human beings, I have seen sugar, I have seen blood, but I have not seen blood sugar. You have seen human beings, you have seen oil, have you seen cholesterol? Blood cholesterol? No. You have seen cholesterol. It's a white, tasteless, orderless substance. This cholesterol has killed so many people because cholesterol is not a disease, but you make it a disease. A recent French study showed of old people, those with the highest cholesterol lived the longest. But every day, everybody worries, Adhril cholesterol, Adhril cholesterol, your blood pressure goes up, your blood sugar goes up and you get a diet. So friends, we have to move in a different direction in India. We have to show the light to the West, saying that the science you are following is wrong and the science followed in the ancient, ancient systems of Ayurveda, the holistic science of Ayurveda is the right thing to follow. As a matter of fact, there is an awakening in the West. The British Medical Journal has asked me to write an editorial called How Might Ayurveda Help Modern Medicine? And for again, don't equate Ayurveda with herbal medicine. Ayurveda is not herbal medicine at all. Herbal medicine has come on to Ayurveda later on from Nati Vaidya. Herbal medicines are not Ayurveda. Ayurveda is Swasthasya Swastha Rakshitam. Preservation of health. Immune boosters. Ayurveda's biggest problem is Panchakarmas. You can rejuvenate the whole thing. You preserve it and if it by any chance goes down, you can rejuvenate it. What a fascinating thing. That is Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the greatest science known to mankind. Please preserve that. Don't get a BMS, BAMS and then go and give pencil injection and steroid tablets. You are killing Ayurveda. Remember that. You are killing Ayurveda. And don't you say that Ayurveda can treat cancer, AIDS, anything. Don't just boast. Don't defy yourself. That's what happened in modern medicine. We keep telling people, we'll keep you all going here forever. So people have now disappointed. What have we done? We have sent a lot of people to meet their maker in heaven. This doesn't happen. Ayurveda never boasted of those things. Ayurveda is system, but it has limitations. Now, for example, just now as I was coming here, a colleague of mine called and said, his son has fallen under the car. His, in his car, he went and hit a truck. And his head is all broken into pieces. And he has got the brain coming out. He's unconscious. Sir, please do something. He thought I was in Mangalore to get the right people. Anyway, I, I told him, don't worry, we'll do the thing. Now, if you say, no, 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 I'll do panchakarma, he'll be all right tomorrow. No. Emergency treatment requires high-tech medicine. But that's only 5 to 10 percent. 90 percent of the sick people can make do with good Ayurvedic doctors. Now, don't you dabble in things which you can't. Know your limitations. I was telling naturopathy people one day. Somebody had some pain in their own student, had tummy ache. Okay? They don't know. 
और मट लगा उसको मट लगाया 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 दिस फेलो हैड एन अपेंडिसाइटिस इट बिकेम एन अपेंडिक्स एप्सिस इट बर्स्ट बिकेम पेरिटोनाइटिस देन ही बिकेम अनकॉन्शियस देन डॉक्टर साहब कुछ कीजिएगा यू नो दिस फेलोस बर्स्ट अपेंडिक्स इज बर्स्ट सो ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट इफ देयर इज एन अपेंडिक्स बर्स्ट यू से आई विल डू मसाजिंग देयर आई विल डू नाइस पिंड तैल एंड देन मसाज इट व्हाट विल हैपन द द पस विल कम थ्रू द माउथ व्हेन ही इज डेड सो लेट अस नो आवर लिमिटेशंस दैट इज व्हाई आई से complementary system some medicine we are evolving a new system where you have training in modern medicine as the basis you have a good grounding in ayurveda and you have a good splitting of yunani siddha homeopathy and everything because the, all these are good now what we have to do is take the wheat from the chaff and take the best wheat and put it together and make a chapati that should be the future of medicare system and this is happening now i am very happy that it's happening in america you will be surprised god willing next month i have to give a talk in johns hopkins medical school one of the most prestigious medical schools in america as to the role of complementary systems of medicine now it is mandatory for an american medical student to study 6 months of alternative medicines of which till now ayurveda was excluded west excluded ayurveda they teach homeopathy they teach acupuncture they teach acupressure because we ourselves don't have respect for our own ayurveda i tell you the fight is very very difficult the fight is very difficult in india but the fight is becoming easier in the west there already you know the other day i was lecturing in chopra foundation in san diego where chopra says sap you must do something about it and chopra is making money like this this is one small bottle no he has got 100 bottles like this most of it is fake but lot of money tons of money wo to nahi chalta hai this kind of holism must come in and we must have a new science of chaos for research and a new kind of control studies because control studies today are ridiculous every control study in the long run the good drug has killed more people than it has saved and this is the unfortunate part because we are having reductionist science in a holistic system we are using linear mathematics for a non linear system we say heart has got this ejection fraction 35% what is ejection fraction heart is not a square it is not an oblong it is not a circle it doesn't contract the way you want it to contract it's a totally different thing what is the what is the shore length of silon any idea silon zigzag shore length is there can you measure it yes you can if you have a meter length it may be 100 miles if you have a foot ruler it will be 200 miles if you have an inch ruler it will be 400 miles if you have a millimeter ruler it will be 800 miles in short it depends on how you measure it but this measure the renal real chaos measure is called fractal measure fractals i don't want to go into all those details so human body has two attractors in phase space a a static attractor called death and a chaotic attractor called health and we are all in this chaotic attractor and sometimes with the disease you fall out of it and if you fall very close to the static attractor death god only can pull you back doctors can't but if you fall out any other place tendency is to fall back into health you and i can only help them fall back into the state of health you can't save somebody from dying don't have don't defy yourselves don't say ah oh, i will see that you don't die never try to live here forever because you'll never succeed but what is important is we must understand our limitations and we must lose this fanaticism ayurveda matra irudre ee bakella alla satt hogide anta hage helbedi ella irutade illi manushyarige help maadlikke all systems take the good from all systems combine them together a lot of people write me such hate mail they say you are spoiling our uh, our uh, uh, business by talking about ayurveda because they don't understand i tell them look i am helping you so that people tomorrow don't drive doctors from the cities to the forest doctors went on strike in israel last year there are no private doctors there government doctors went on strike asking for higher pay 3 months they didn't work nurses ran the hospitals then they came back somebody broke a piece now the audit shows death rate fell down precipitously during those three months <laughs> henry mind you you all got the wrong address of real healing system i'll give you a joke and stop it and before i stop let me thank girish this wonderful boy who has been after my blood like a leech to see that i come here a beggar one day was very hungry so he thought let me go to this temple illi ond olle devasthana untu let me go there and beg 
when puja is over lot of people give money so he went and he was lying down there puja over lot of people came out they were eating the prasad and all said amma heartless sir nobody looked at him they all went away so he was very hungry again then he said to these people are not good i'll go next time to the church so sunday he went in the church when the mass was going on and sat outside again the same thing happened lot of people came out of the mass and they walked away then he said both these people are bad so friday he went to the mosque he slept there nobody looked at him then he was so hungry he was almost dying somehow or other he went and somewhere he was sleeping on the road side it so happened that was in front of a bar and a restaurant so at night somebody staggered out to the bar he was staggering he said eh ena illi en martiya and he put his hand in and 100 rupee note he threw it and after some time another drunkard came out and he didn't know what he was doing he pulled out his purse and a 500 rupees note he threw so the beggar had 600 rupees in his hand and he was so happy then he told god oh god all these days you gave me wrong address now i know where you reside so the correct address of medicine is in your house thank you very much i now request mr jayant nadigel the trade commissioner of flanders federated state of belgium to address the gathering dignitaries on the dais girish i don't know i think i must be out of place here i just uh, came here to wish uh, girish all the best but then he requested me to speak well uh, all i can say is uh, he's done an excellent job of bringing this uh, product to uh, the aggrieved as far as the diabetes is concerned and also perhaps he knows why he invited me is i think the belgium has the largest concentration of uh, diabetic patients so i think he goes very well for his uh, research i only wish that you know he uh, crosses the frontiers and then starts marketing his product in europe as well any help that is required i'm always there for you so i wish you all the very best good evening everybody it was a great uh, privilege for me to have mr bm hegde on the occasion of launching of our product uh, sugar knocker it was an inspiration when uh, 2000 uh, when uh, hegde was uh, giving a keynote lecture on the uh, uh, ayurveda 2000 at chennai i first time listened to his uh, oration then at uh, that time i had uh, so i thank uh, bm hegde for uh, uh, coming over and uh, <laughs> blessing the occasion